Hi, I'm Liz with the Bozeman Public Library. Welcome to this presentation on Vaudeville. This presentation is part of a series, Real Stories from the People of the Cold Millions. The novel, The Cold Millions, by Jess Walter, is this year's One Book, One Bozeman. This presentation is to give a little more background into the character of Ursula the Great, who was a fictional character. In the novel, she is a vaudeville performer, and vaudeville was a very popular theater performance that influenced the development of TV, entertainment, and variety shows. Vaudeville shows are theatrical variety acts that became popular in the 1850s and 60s. They started out as somewhat obscene comedy shows geared towards a primarily male audience. However, by the 1880s, vaudeville was a family-friendly theatrical performance. Multiple entertainers with different skills would take to the stage over the course of the evening. Vaudeville performers ranged from comedians, singers, plate spinners, ventriloquists, dancers, acrobatics, animal trainers, magicians, and many more. Vaudeville rose in popularity with the general public in the 1880s, but lost prominence in the late 1920s when talkies became popular. Talkies were speaking movies. In its height, over 25,000 performers engaged in vaudeville. Vaudeville popularity also gave rise to minstrel shows, which often featured blackface and racist caricatures of people of color and immigrants. The phrase Jim Crow comes from a vaudeville blackface character. Vaudeville also gave rise to ragtime music, and some black artists found success in vaudeville circuits, creating their own vaudeville groups, groups and going on to become jazz and blues stars. Vaudeville's surge in popularity during 1900 and 1912. At its height, there were thousands of theaters across the country. New York was vaudeville capital. Larger, mostly middle-class towns that could afford higher ticket prices attracted celebrity entertainers, whereas smaller towns catered to working-class audiences. Vaudeville groups often consisted of family or similar performers that traveled at circuit together. For the time, vaudeville groups were highly diverse in their members. New acts would be tested to see what worked for audiences, and many performers became known for the act that they did, rather than their actual identity. Ursula the Great is an example of this. She took on the role of Ursula that belonged to a woman that was forced into retirement. Ursula was the act, not the character's name, and for most of the novel, she's referred to as the act that she's known for, one that she inherited. Many of early cinema's greatest performers got their start in vaudeville. Actors like Buster Keaton, Will Rogers, Charlie Chaplin, Bob Hope, and Fanny Bryce. TV variety shows such as The Ed Sullivan Show, Carol Burnett Show, and even Saturday Night Live are modern versions of vaudeville. Today, we can see remnants of these types of performances in late night shows that routinely feature comedy, music, games, and interviews. Vaudeville at the turn of the century had some pretty interesting acts. Vaudeville at its core was about entertainment, shock, and comedy. Acts frequently used animals or stunts. Magic tricks and popular acts would often reverse gender norms, such as the success of the Gordon Sisters' Boxing Act. Here are a few strange but popular acts. In 1892, a dentist took the road and became Painless Parker's Dental Circus, which apparently was a big enough hit that when he died in 1952, he owned 30 clinics and employed 75 other dentists. Ethel Pirtle was a stunt motorcyclist who performed with a lion in the sidecar. Meanwhile, Gus Visser was immortalized when he sang with a duck on film. Let's take a brief look at female performers that would have been on stage in Spokane in 1909. The following artists were all mentioned in Spokane Press as having a performance during that year. Anna Eva Fay was a famous psychic. She was born in 1851 in Ohio and died in 1927. Her birth name was Anne Eliza Haithman. She married Henry Cummings Melville Fay, who was denounced as a fraud by spiritualists, and since he also appeared on stage with Anna Eva Fay, it brought questions about how authentic her act was. She toured the world at the shows in London in 1874 and participated in research into the psychic ability in 1875. However, in 1876, her methods were printed after a former member of the troupe demonstrated how Fay was doing her tricks. Later, Harry Houdini, the famous escape artist, claimed that she informed him of how she tricked the research in, in London into believing that she was causing objects in another room to move. Faye's daughter-in-law, Anna Norman, also performed psychic arcs, and another performer using the name Annie Faye was also performing psychic acts during the same time period. 
Nellie Nichols was born Helene Katsakaikia to Greek parents in 1885. She joined a vaudeville troupe in 1907 and started touring as a singer and actress with the Henry W. Savage Touring Company. Nichols known, was known for her parodies of popular songs and vocal imitations. She was also a well-renowned composer. She was extremely popular and was booked for extended visits and frequently performed past the time allotted to her act. By 1912, she was headlining plays in New York, and in 1930, she made the jump to screen, becoming a very popular screen actress as well. Valerie Berger was a French-American actress who spent 17 years as a popular headliner in vaudeville. She later went on to perform in Broadway and Hollywood. Berger's first act was with her sister in 1890 as a chorus singer, and after many successful years in theater, including in the popular still-performed play of Madame Butterfly, she turned to vaudeville in 1902, where she had produced, directed, and acted in 25 different sketches. She also served as a manager for other acts. She worked in cinema as well and continued in vaudeville until she died in 1938. Minerva's real name is uncertain. It could be Mildred Snelling or Marguerite Gertz Van Dorn. She was a bit of a mystery. What is known about her is that she started her career in Europe in the 1890s and was an excellent escape artist. In 1907, she married another vaudeville performer and came to the United States, performing under the while under the title of King and Queen of Handcuffs. They were known for their ability to escape any handcuff. Her act was heavily inspired by Harry Houdini. She performed similar tricks to him, so similar that he once lamented that she performed his milk can escape trick and received a larger audience than he did. Houdini may or may not have been involved in a plot that may or may not have happened in which Minerva was nearly blinded by lime in the, in the water barrel. She had a long career on the stage and continued touring around the world. Florence Bindley was a musician from New Jersey whose first stage name was Baby Bindley. She started in theater when she was just three years old. She performed between, before Queen Victoria in England when she was only six years old. Her acts frequently included singing and dancing. Binley was first a Broadway star, performing in several productions in the 1890s and the early 1900s, but by 1909 she'd moved to vaudeville. She was billed as the girl with the diamond dress in her acts because of her costume. Eva Taylor, like several other women on this list, had several names. She was also known as Katherine Henderson, Irene Williams, and her actual name, Irene Joy Gibbons. She was born in 1891 and started vaudeville at eight years old, traveling in the U.S., Europe, and Asia. In the 1920s, she moved to the East Coast and became a respected blues singer. In the 20s and 30s, she and her husband performed with the Blue Five group, which included Louis Armstrong. She was also part of the Charleston Chasers and appeared in the Broadway performance of Bottomland. She took some time off for, from performing in the 1940s, but in the 60s, she returned to the stage and toured in Europe. Pauline Theresa Moran, also known as Polly Moran, was a comedian known for her skills in slapstick comedy. She was widely known and very popular. She started her career in vaudeville, but in 1914, she signed on with Keystone Studios and several years years later, signed with MGM Studios. She paired up with another comedian named Marie Dressler, and the two created several popular comedies until Dressler's death in 1934. Her career began to, fa to fall after Dressler's death, but Moran continued to work in cinema until her death in 1952. Polly Moran has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1909, entertainment was changing. Film was still relatively new, but popular and booming. Spokane's first cinema opened in 1903. After this first one, more theaters opened in downtown area of Spokane, and live theater and vaudeville shows started to decline. For a time, vaudeville and film existed side by side. Vaudeville acts would take place between short films. The first short film shown in Spokane was The Great Train Robbery, which was a 12-minute silent western. By 1909, cinemas were growing exponentially. In 1910, there were 18 theaters. 12 of them were exclusively for motion pictures. Starting in 1910, when the golden age of Hollywood was starting to take off, researchers have found that women in the entertainment and film industry were decreasing in numbers from all positions. Prior to 1910, women composed 40% of the class and wrote 20% of the movies. 
They attributed this change to less independent film companies and larger film studios. This was also the period that vaudeville started to decline. Many theaters were showing vaudeville skits between films, and as talkies came on the screen in the, in the late 1920s, vaudeville declined even further. It wouldn't be until 1943 when the numbers of women in entertainment started rising again. In other words, in 1909, when the events of the Cold Millions was taking place, vaudeville was still at its peak, but it's possible that vaudeville performers were seeing the changing attitudes and technology shifting towards film. In the novel, Ursula refers to herself as Second Ursula. Her real name is Margaret Ann Burns, and she becomes Second Ursula because she was a down-on-her-luck singer that once performed in front of an audience of 600. From reading about the careers of several other performers of the time, Ursula's career trajectory was pretty common. Many performers, even famous well-known performers, took a turn on the vaudeville stage between other gigs. In the novel, Ursula the Great agrees to a shady deal with a mining magnet for the chance at a future business in her name. She's already witnessed how the entertainment industry can spit out an aging performer with nothing but memories of fame. Owning a business, having rights, is one surefire way to protect her future in these changing times. Vaudeville was an extremely popular entertainment industry that bridged theater and film and gave, gave many performers a stage. You can read more about Ursula the Great and what happens to her in The Cold Millions by Jess Walter. This book is this year's One Book, One Bozeman Choice, and it is available from the library or from any of our partners. Please check back for more programs celebrating the people and themes of the novel throughout the year. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.